there guys, welcome back in the shop for episode five on the high voltage series where we're gonna teach you how to make a test cord for your neon sign transformer. This is also frequently how you're gonna power it like 90% of the time, but it's something that every high voltage nerd needs and I'm gonna teach you how to make a good one with the right tools and the right materials. The first thing you're gonna need is a piece of cord. Now, for me, this one is just an old uh, extension cord that died. You can do this out of a regular IEC cord or computer power cord or whatever, but however you do it, you wanna strip the end down, you know, strip off the outer jacket, and you're gonna end up with a pigtail like this. Now, I leave my ground about an inch longer than the mains, and assuming it, the colors might be different if your cord was made in China or something like that, you might have brown and blue and green. Look up the colors, it's not hard to figure it out, or grab your meter and meter them out because one of these is gonna be hot, one's neutral, one's ground. The cool thing with neon sign transformers is polarity doesn't matter. As long as you know which one is your ground, you're fine because it's AC and it doesn't, the, the NST doesn't care. So here's how we're gonna do it. First off, I'm gonna grab the greatest pair of wire strippers ever made. I use these like crazy. You can find a link to these in, my, uh, in the links below. This is why they're so cool. I use these all the time for 12 gauge and under. This is my go-to wire strippers and I love these things. I'm sure they have a proper name. I just call them alligator strippers, but you can set this to your preferred depth. I use a lot of Wagos, so I always leave it set at about a centimeter and you just stick this in, done. Give it a twist and you are ready to terminate, okay? So we'll do that on here too. This is some pretty skookum cable, which is nice. In here, ta-da, it's beautiful. All right, so now we've got our three wires ready to go. Next step, you're gonna need a little heat shrink. You can buy the ridiculously expensive heat shrink. Um, I don't, I buy cheap heat shrink for 99% of what I do. There's a time for the fancy heat shrink and silicone sleeving and all that. And you've seen me use that in projects, but this stuff, Cheap, Amazon, you get a little kit of it. It's got a variety of fruit flavors. It's good stuff. And we're just gonna grab three little pieces. We're gonna want a green one as well, because I have green, which is cool. That might be too small. Ah, we'll make it work. I'll teach you the trick to get your peach shrink that's a bit too small on there. All right, so we'll start with hot. Now, the first thing you do is slip your heat shrink on. And then we'll grab a terminal. Now, you wanna make sure your wire is twisted. And the terminals I'm using are Hastronica, it's these. You can get, you can get a kit of these. I'm using the quarter inch 16 slash 14 ring terminal. Um, if you wanna get the best of these that money can buy, get Panduit. They're ridiculously expensive, but God, they're worth it. Um, for what we're doing here, you don't need that. Get one of the cheap Amazon kits. There's a link in the description, you'll find it. Um, so on here, we look at the terminal. Now we're doing a crimp terminal. So you can see in here, we've got the jacket here, which is really, really belled out, kind of fat. And that little spot there in the metal is what we're heading for. That's our metal actual terminal. The rest is just insulators. So make sure that these are twisted down nice and tight. You don't have any little wild ones poking out. We call them flyers. And you slip this into there and make sure you go all the way through and out the other side of the metal part, okay? And we're gonna keep everything else out of the way and then grab, these are the best crimpers for what I'm doing here, the Klein 3005 CRs. These are great, I love them. These are good for insulated, this style, because there's insulation on it, crimp connectors. These are great for that. And you'll see there's a blue dot on the die right there, so you wanna use that one. Place this in the die, and then squeeze it all, make sure your wire's still all the way in there and then squeeze it all the way down until the handles come together, even after it stops clicking, all the way together with everything you got, uh, okay? Open it up, 
And then the first thing we do is a tug test. Okay, that's in there. And now this heat shrink is the exact same size as that. They're both like, I don't know, a quarter inch probably. So we're gonna hold this heat shrink well out of the way and pinch it inside your hand so that shields it a bit. And then we're gonna grab our heat gun you can do this with a lighter, but that's just bad form. Be classy, use a heat gun. So we're gonna melt that right down, spin it around, let the whole thing shrink. Now, depending on what kind of heat shrink you use, you may see some stuff spooge out. That'll be an adhesive. And we're gonna let this totally cool off a second before we do the next step, because that's really hot. And if you slide this piece of heat shrink down over it, it's gonna activate this heat shrink before it's all the way on. It only takes a couple seconds. See, and then it's warm enough to touch. And then we're gonna take this and here, I'll show you. We're gonna slide this right down over it, all the way down to the tip, okay? So we're doubly protected there because this particular thing is going to get a lot of abuse. It's going to get a lot of handling. And you want to make sure that you give it some good mechanical reinforcement. Not to mention the fact that heat shrink is just fun to play with. And if you're going to be in the shop, you should be having fun. So there's, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's a lovely little connection. Double insulated here mechanically reinforced and super skookum. So now that we've done that for the one, I'm gonna do it for the other one. We're twisted down nice and tight. Slide your heat shrink on first. It may seem pedantic that I mentioned slide your heat shrink on first. It is being pedantic because I've forgotten that more times than I'm ever going to admit on camera, but it does happen and you will do this too. So when you get your beautiful connection all together and you forgot to put the heat shrink down inside it, don't feel bad. We've all done it. It's okay. So we're slid on there. That's good. Grab our big crimpers. Now you can get cheaper crimpers than these. That will work. You can, you can get these, okay? This is the older model of Kleins. These will work just fine. But for this type of connection in this application, I, I like these. These are absolutely my favorite. And I'm here to tell you, there's nothing more expensive than a cheap tool. Especially if you're just getting started out in this. If you're a tinkerer, if you're making stuff, if you're learning tug test about high voltage and how things work, you're gonna acquire tools. When you do, buy the best you can afford. Don't buy crappy tools because they get in your way, they make you angry, they're a pain in the butt, and eventually you're gonna get sick of it and you're gonna go buy the nicer one anyway. So just save the money from the start because it's actually cheaper in a lot of ways to buy the good tool from the start. Ain't nothing more expensive than a cheap tool or a free boat. All right, that's on there. We're gonna let that cool down a second. And then as soon as it's ready, we're gonna slide this right down all the way over it. And make sure to not cover the metal. You wanna be down to the metal, but you don't wanna cover it. And look at that, that's still so hot, it's starting to shrink a little bit. <laughs> I didn't wait as long as I should have. I just like heat shrink, it's fun. You don't want to cover the metal because that's where your contact patch is going to be. If you accidentally, you know, shrink this and it's way down over the metal, you can trim it back with just a razor blade, nothing to it. All right, next up is our ground. Now this one's going to be different because this heat shrink is smaller. This is smaller than a quarter inch, I think. So we're going to have to do this one a little screwy, I think. And yes, I totally could have used a bigger piece of heat shrink and used the black or the red or whatever, but I got green. I'll make it, I want to make it green. How often do you get to use green heat shrink? 
squeeze with everything you got. Now on this one, because this is smaller, I'm gonna slide it inside, actually. This won't go all the way down, but it'll give me more of a transition. It won't really insulate it much more because I don't have any bare wire this far up anyway, but I'll feel better about it and that's what's important. This is my art and I can make it any way I want with whatever colors I want, as long as all my grounds are green. So we're gonna roll that. Heat shrink it all down. There, see? And it's a totally different look there. But it works, it's nice. It'll work just fine. And that is now a beautiful test cord for neon sign transformers. We've got our heat shrink, a good sturdy cord, enough length stripped off. You wanna have about this much. If it's too short, you're gonna run into problems. This is, this is enough to reach everywhere you need on the end of an NST. And they're all color coded. Our neutral is white, our hot is black, our green is ground. It's all beautiful. And we used quarter inch hole ring terminals on the end. That's important. You gotta, you gotta have a quarter inch of space to fit that bolt through. So when you, when you grab the ring terminals to do yours, check them on your NST and make sure that the hole is big enough. You don't wanna have it too big, and if it's too small, it's not gonna work at all. You guys have fun, thank you for hanging out, thank you for learning something new and cool, and thank you for having fun. I'm Chris Bowden, and as always, we'll see you next time.